You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Now, we have not uh, had, of course, a federal briefing because that was uh, being canceled by the Trump people. He did take some questions today. One of the things, Adrian, that, that is crazy, shocking, and stunning, uh, this took place uh, today um, at the White House, and the issue came up, the issue came up dealing with, um, dealing with, quote, cities that need relief. How shameful is it for the Trump administration to literally link COVID-19 relief funds with sanctuary cities and ICE deportations? Listen to what he actually said today. It's a bad management and to give them the money that uh, they lost, that's unfair to other states. Now, if it's COVID related, I guess we can talk about it. But we'd want certain things also, including sanctuary city adjustments, because we have so many people in sanctuary cities, which I don't even think are popular, even by radical left folks, because what's happening is uh, people are being protected that shouldn't be protected. And a lot of bad things are happening with sanctuary cities. But that's just standing up here answering this question. That's one of the things I think about. Uh, if we were going to do something for the states, I think they'd probably want a uh, Something having to do with sanctuary cities, something having to do with other different points that we can discuss uh, a little bit later on. Yeah, uh, with the states is we're not so, looking. So, I mean, Adrian, really? He's such a pig. I mean, I think it's reprehensible for the person occupying the White House, who some, you know, willingly and willfully call president. I just I can't bring myself to say it in this time right now that he would withhold funds to help actual American citizens because uh, that particular jurisdiction like treats all people with the humanity that they deserve, right? In a country that says bring us your poor, your huddled masses and your and your and your weak and you're scared, right? Like I, I just I can't it, it 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 literally makes me sick to my stomach to to see him Leverage funds, critical funds, life-saving funds, uh, livelihood-saving funds, to make political asks for his own xenophobic agenda. I just, I, it's, it's, it's sickening, honestly. Um, and you know, especially when we're talking about a community that, by and large, contributes great amounts of money into our economy. I mean. Immigrant peoples and undocumented peoples, they pay taxes on the wages that they earn in this country. Tax money that should be coming back into these communities that desperately need it in, in this public health crisis. It just, it, it boggles my mind. But then, then again, this is the person that we're, we're dealing with where he constantly finds ways to lower the bar and lower the bar and embarrass the tenants on the on, on which this country is founded. Um, Melek, really, what the hell does COVID nineteen relief have to do with ICE deportations? And, and, yeah, and well, how is that all of a sudden? How is that all of a sudden a condition for cities to get relief? Say, oh, if in order for us to grant you COVID nineteen relief, um, you're going to allow ICE to deport anybody who they want to. Really? It seems as if, and I don't know what happened before the before the clip, but it seems as if that the president himself is, is maybe, well, I, I'm pretty sure that this is another instance of the president speaking out loud in ways that he shouldn't. I doubt very seriously that any funding is tied, any relief funding is tied to what, however the, the president feels about sanctuary city or whatever the Republican position is, conservative position is on sanctuary cities, I doubt that's something that ultimately ends up in any piece of legislation. So I imagine this is something of what the president is thinking out loud. But there are other things that the yeah, president... But, 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 but Melly, here's the deal, though. Let's just be honest here. We saw this when it came to ventilators and things along those lines, where... You had, in the case of Colorado, for instance, they tell Colorado, 
don't ask for ventilators. And then all of a sudden, he posts a tweet, oh, Senator Cory Gardner called me, so I'm sending 100 ventilators to Colorado. The reality is, we have heard numerous stories of them, in essence, doling out decisions. When he said, look, don't return the calls of the Michigan governor, and then, of course, Florida got 100% what they asked for, even though they got more than what they asked for, other hard-hit states did not get it. I mean, we're seeing somebody who plays the partisan game of, oh, I will hook up my red states, but I'll ignore blue states. He's already playing this game. Oh, he's I absolutely think, playing this I, game. And if you read the bill, the last funding bill that came I, out, I, I, they gave states a hold, 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 hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on, Adrian. Hold on, Adrian. Hold on. I need Mel to respond. I'm going to come back to you. Go okay. ahead, Mel. Uh, I believe it was Chris Wallace who actually asked the Michigan governor about the rumor that the Trump administration or through Vice Prince or that there was a conversation um, about withholding anything from Michigan. And she didn't on air. She actually denied that that was so. But I don't know, and I haven't heard any governor say that the administration actually actually withheld any type of protective gear or uh, respirators. That anything that states did that states went without a respirator or a PPE because the federal government was withholding that from the state. I know that's been a lot of chatter in the media about that, but I don't think that there's been any proof that the administration itself withhold life saving things like. Um, respirators and PPE because of the president's um, feelings about a particular governor or blue state. See, but then what, hey, he actually does, what he actually does and what the and how the bills are written is that they guarantee a minimum number of dollars per state, but then they leave in this this big big window for him or for his administration to dole out funding based on whether or not he agrees with the particular person in charge and with the agenda in that particular state. Um, the last funding bill, like it, it had that language in there. States will receive a minimum of, and the rest will be at the liberty of the Department of Health, I mean, the Department of Human Services. So clearly he can play favorites Bob with the rest Ryan. of that money as long as the states get that minimum dollar. Bottom line here, there should be no preconditions they should not be playing games with the lives of uh, Americans. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honore. Uh, thanks for his first black surgeon general. Dr. Jocelyn Elders, John Hope Bryan, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California, Dr. Sadrina Calder, Retired General Lloyd Austin, Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick, Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams, Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens, Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congresswoman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Interbridge Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior. Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Brave Boy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, 
founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, and mayor of Bennett College. Coroner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist, Suzette Clark. Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews, Jr. Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District. Dr. Leon Madugal, president-elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey. Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You're getting the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.